Hi, everyone, and welcome, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. No matter where you are, you're probably somewhere around the world. Um, today, we're really excited to have HackerCon, so a big thank you to Red Team Village and um, for partnering with us at Hacking is Not a Crime. Today's day is totally dedicated to the entire hacker community, but also those that are interested in helping out the hacker community. We have talks about how to talk to the press when you find a vulnerability. We have talks on vulnerability disclosure, of course, as well, because it wouldn't be a good hacker rights conference without that, to be honest. Uh, but other than that, we also have talks coming from EFF, Disclose.io, I am the Calvary, Hacking is Not a Crime. So you guys can learn a little bit more about these organizations and what they're doing, but also how you can get involved if you feel like it as well. But first, I want to talk to you guys about a very special research project. So I'm going to share my screen. So hold on one second. And I'm going to have Kelsey unmute herself. All right. So this research project is actually something extremely important and close to my heart, um, as you guys are aware of, is that vulnerability discovery or vulnerability disclosure is one of the things that you know means a lot to our community. We wouldn't exist without it, to be honest, because we're always protecting and serving. But the one thing that we have to talk about, which is a real realistic thing, is that we have a problem with diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is why it's important to have research. We have statistics about of low rates and everything, um, but we need to go deeper than that. So this is a research project that's bought, um, brought to you by these players that you see on the screen. Um, Kelsey, do you wanna do a quick overview of the, the main players of this research project? Um, sure, yeah. So um, SP2 is actually housed at the University of Maryland and the Maryland Cybersecurity Center, and it is the group of which I am a part of. Um, and we do a lot of studying security, privacy, and people. Uh, so basically looking at the intersection of computer security and people everywhere from end users to software developers to uh, people who do vulnerability discovery. Um, and then Tufts actually houses our most recent graduate from SP2. Um, and so he was kind of the brainchild of this project and brought all of us together. And then we have a, another faculty sponsor and another student working at the University of Chicago. And we're kind of all working together as a giant team to make this happen. Thank you, Kelsey. So let's talk about the statistics. As you probably are aware that like, for example, HackerOne in a recent report shared that 10% identify as female or non-binary. Also, Synac has shared that 50% are women and 54% are non-white participants felt bias against them or a lack of opportunity in their career. And this is very much real. Um, the, I don't know about you guys, but I know when I went into the bug bounty space, I actually had a different username. I didn't have a quote unquote feminine username. I didn't have a picture that was feminine because the reason of Cyber stalking is very prevalent in our community. The other thing is harassment is another thing that we've experienced a lot in the community, but also for us to feel like we could participate without you first seeing our gender and who we are on the outside. And so this is a really, really big problem too, because if we don't have people feeling like they have safe spaces, how are they supposed to be part of our community and feel part of our community? And this is why this research is so important. And what we want to ask from everyone is to really pay attention to this and to share it with their friends, colleagues, tweet it out and everything, because we do need to get more participants. All right, Kelsey, go ahead. Yeah, so um, as Chloe mentioned, and I'm sure you're all very well aware, this is a very real problem. Um, and statistics are great because they can tell us that there's a problem, but they don't exactly tell us why there's a problem. Um, and so, in order to actually fix something like this, we kind of have to understand what's going on and why it's happening. Um, and so that's kind of the whole basis of this research. We're trying to understand why this is actually an issue. And in order to do that, we have to talk to people who have actually experienced these challenges. Researchers are great. We have all the great methods to do this, but we haven't actually been on the ground experiencing these problems. Um, and that's where you guys come in. So. Um, if you feel that you are a marginalized person and you happen to maybe want a $30 gift card, um, we would love to interview you. Um, and so basically the way the interview works is it takes about an hour um, and we ask you things about your development path. How did you get to where you are in your career? 
um, the community inclusiveness along the way, um, and as well as the su support networks and the resources that you drew on uh, as you were kind of pursuing this path. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, All so right. if I was no, go if for you it. Are interested in, if you are interested in um, participating, there's a couple of links here. So there's one that points you to kind of the details of the project and, and the way things work. And then there's another link that you can click on. It'll take you to a short um, screener survey. And basically all it's going to ask you is, is a couple of questions. And then we will reach out um, with an email uh, to chat with you and, and set up an interview. So yeah, take a screenshot of this, tweet it out. We need to get more participants. And it's like I said, it is very vital to have this research. I don't know if anyone really knows, but uh, back in 2018, Bug Crowd came out with a report saying that 4% of their hunters on their site basically identify as a woman. And this was one of the reasons that led to creating women hackers was because that statistic is so sad um, <laughs> in so many ways. I mean, you have 50, 50%, like 50% of women, and yet they can't, it doesn't feel like we're doing enough to welcome them and have an inclusive environment, but it's not just about women. It's also those that are marginalized as well, is that we need to become a safer environment. And the only way we're going to learn how to have safer environments is hearing people's personal stories and experiences. So then we're able to actually understand it in, in further depth, then we can make changes within our community to make sure that we incorporate more um, inclusivity so that we can be a better community altogether. So please do take a picture of this, uh, share it, tweet it out. It is so important that we get more participants and it'd be great for our community to know that we're taking the next steps to making more inclusive environment for everyone. Anything else, Kelsey? Nope, that's great. Thank you. I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to uh, listen to our small, small spiel and, and uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kelsey.